Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I don't really need to read out what I'm talking about, but I am. I'm going to talk about purchase to pay. And sort of, but before I talk about it in more detail, where does this fit in in John's introduction earlier? Where is it in cracking the code scenario? Well, I've probably somewhere all those six points, but I've pulled out the, the three main ones, I think. One is the content understanding. Another, the content automation. And finally, the integration with multiple business applications. I'll whiz through this one very quickly because I've been introduced. Marcus Honeybill, member of the UK SCR, uh, SCI Solution Engineering Team. But what is purchase to pay in simple terms? Definition pulled off Google, probably. Operations are handled in the company from procurement to payment of an invoice. So it could be for anything. Goods, materials, services, machinery, pizzas we heard earlier on, apples maybe, industrial pumps and machines. Look at the high-level view of that. We can split down a little bit further. We've got need. There's always a need for something. We have an offer. We have an order. We have order confirmation, delivery invoices, and payment, obviously, at some stage. Now, stepping back from things, because I know now you're all thinking about work. You're thinking about the commercial world. But just to help you analogize things, let's think about the domestic world. Those of you with children might be more familiar with this particular process. Dad, please can I buy? A blessing or curse that Amazon is, we all find it pretty useful. But what does my son think purchase to pay is all about? Got the map, the schema there. There's always the need. He looks at the website. Usually, thank goodness, because he's pretty well behaved, he asks me, can I buy something? Come on to my role later. He then places the order. And he's impatient for delivery. Thank God for Amazon Prime. It's the best 100 euros I spend every year. But what about from my perspective? The bank of mum and dad, typically. A role I'm sure is really familiar to most of you out there. He asks me, it's good. I asked him what it was. I said, fine. And then I paid the bank. And then I, because it's my Amazon account, I got the order confirmation. And usually Amazon sends me an invoice as well. Now, that's relatively simple one-off transaction. But what about those pre-Christmas Amazon orders? Or maybe the takeaway meal? Douglas talked about pizza. We talk about curry in our house. So there we go. More complex. We've got more line items. We've got a more complex delivery scenario. I would like to collect all this to be delivered at 7.30 p.m., whatever. But then a couple of weeks later, we're, we can't be bothered to cook again. And again. And again. So. It's still, you might think, relatively simple, but we're creating more transactions that are all different. And maybe I want to manage those and think about those internally, even though it's a domestic transaction. So if we go back to that Amazon process in a little bit more detail, we had the need. We reviewed the website, found the item, placed an order. We then or place the order clicking the button, in fact. I got the invoice, or I paid. I got the order confirmation. I'd already given a pre-confirmation confirmation to my son. We got the invoice, and then we awaited delivery. So even at home, all those bases are covered in some shape or form. Now, that's the domestic view. What about the commercial world, where everything will be much more complex? If you heard the leap here, 1.2 million invoices a year, 20,000 different suppliers to manage. Massive, massive headache, unless you stay on top of things. So go back to our, um, there were only two of us involved in that process. Going back to our familiar schematic, we've got three main areas of business. 
We've got the purchasing team. We've got logistics team. And we've got finance. And these are typically groups of many people. There may be overlap depending upon the size of the organization, but groups of many people that all need to keep the part of keeping on track of this whole problem. And then we can also split the stages up into sort of pre order confirmation and then everything that happens after that. Now, many of you will be using quite rigid solutions built into your ERP. I know a little bit about SAP, not very much, but I know it's painful building SAP workflow. Or maybe you've got very relatively manual processes, or maybe you rely on Excel spreadsheets, which is sort of really still quite manual. And those, those, in those processes, wherever they are, are not necessarily efficient, they're certainly not necessarily repeatably, um, reliably repeatable, quite possibly not auditable, and you'll still have many internal outbound documents associated with them, which, unlike my Amazon purchase, you need to keep for audit reasons. I think, again, the lead pair was, on average, about four documents per invoice transaction. So, we're going to look across all this. Now, invoicing, we will be talking about how many of you out there have got, have got DOCSIS invoicing processing now? Hands up. OK, that's a little less than 32%. Oh, maybe not. May I? I, don't know. I think there's a few more people than that in the room. But we reckon the average, or no, it's about 32% of our customers are using DOCSIS invoice processing. So, but what are you doing with the rest of the process? Again, Lipo was saying we're beginning to think about do it next on our roadmap for DOCSIS development will be the order processing. So what other areas of the process might you think about doing using DOCSIS for? And so order confirmation, certainly. And also, just generally, the attachments world, all those related documents, not necessarily just to the the, that specific transaction, but maybe also to the supplier that, that you're collecting. So what we're going to talk about today is how DOCSIS can help in, the, in those three specific areas. Now, forgive me if you've already got invoice processing. We're going to cover that, and actually, we're going to cover that first. So let's crack on. So domestically, bringing it back to my world, the world we all sort of more or less can understand easily, most transactions don't involve a formal invoice. Maybe a receipt, which is usually ignored, but others may be the more significant purchases, which in this day and age are often web transactions with suppliers with whom I have an account. So actually, the web world formalizes things slightly. It's easier to, to, for people to provide you with copies of invoices or, or orders. Now, we've got, as I said, we've got Amazon. We've got the Indian restaurant. But we've got trains. We've got car parks. We've got very many other places. And for some of these, I, need, I do need a copy of the invoice. For example, when I claim my expenses. So I ha typically then, I have to go to each website and make a green print or download the document, or maybe I go to my email and scroll through where that train travel receipt from last month. Okay, I know where to find them, but I've got to go to many different places. And the process is completely manual and laborious. Now, what about in business? What's that process? And what do we do and what can we do with the invoices? Now, here's a high-level view. We need to get the invoices into the system from whatever source in whatever format typically paper, PDF, maybe XML, and then extract and validate the data, both header, line item, discount rates, whatever that other information is. Then we need to approve and post where appropriate gathering, supporting data and documents, and interfacing with the ERP and maybe other systems. Now, obviously, capture isn't just simply OCR to give full text search but it's an AI-driven extraction platform. And someone, not me, <laughs> could spend hours telling you about it in detail. And I'll encourage you, you've heard a little bit about it already, but I'd encourage you to attend Gregor and Doug's presentation, um, keynote first thing tomorrow morning. Or if not, please go and see some of my colleagues in one of the technology booths. OK, so let's look at invoices. Let's look at the structure. Internal processing requirements, both by the supplier 
and the purchaser and legislation demand that an invoice contains certain data. We've got header data, typically summary information, and we've got line items, VAT numbers, discounts, payment terms, delivery dates, and on and on. Lots of standard information which is presented in many different ways. We all know, and Lee Pair told us again, 20,000 suppliers, that's probably more than 10,000 different formats of invoice. Pro might even be 20,000 formats of invoice. That's a real headache if you're processing manually. So if we're lucky, we might, we might have enlightened suppliers or legislation driving all suppliers, probably above a certain size organization, to use e-invoicing. But many still send a paper physical invoice, or maybe a PDF attached to the email. I suppose that's a degree of progress, but maybe not enough. So how does Doxis help? Now, to make life as easy as possible for the user, we've built the validation mask. And let's have a look and see what it looks like. So here we've, we are in Doxis. As you can on the right-hand side, we've got the document. You may notice that we've already highlighted some items on that document. And on the left, we've got the validation mask, in which we break down the extracted data into, logical, into a logical presentation format, grouping, for example, into header, into task, into status, into recipient, into vendor, into vendor and payment terms and line items, and so on. And as you can see on the left here, can't find my pointer, don't worry. As you can see on the left, we've got certain items highlighted. We've got green over here, down the left-hand side here. Doxis is happy. That's good. We've also got some red ones. Doxis is not happy. It's indicating to the user that he or she needs to act. Now, also, you can see that the invoice number field over there is, is empty and is highlighted in red to really bring that to the user's attention. On the right-hand panel, we can see we've got certain date fields, or a number fields, rather, um, highlighted in blue. And this is where the AI engine is saying, these could be the number that you're looking for. User, please select, click on it, and it will populate the field as the, as the number that, we, um, that, you, that you want. And again, the system can learn as it does more and more on this, and we heard that from Leap here this afternoon as well. So, and that's not only true for header data, it can be true for the recipient and also for the vendor. Now, in these cases, we've got the little um, magnifying glass there. So, for things like vendor or, and, and recipient, where we probably have multiple transactions with that organization, and we've got that information in our ERP rather than manual typing or rather than relying on, on the AI and OCRing, we can just pull that data and allow the user to check that data in, the, in that other system. So accessing your, that master metadata source. So again, we can click on the magnifying glass and get that information. Now if we go down to line items, we can see they've a lot of information for us and it's also highlighted on the right-hand side. It's very pale, I'm not on the projector, but we're in a particular line item and, and, and those items are highlighted there. And again, we can use the magnifying glass to pull up the ERP system to access data about the cost centers or account centers that we need to complete each line item detail in our, in our validation mask. We're also able to, dis to, to add highlights to the document and, and annotations which can be displayed or not displayed. There's a button up there to, 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 to take them out of the screen or not. Now, this could be useful. So may maybe you've got to highlight a particular transaction on a, on a really multi-line invoice document and send it across to a user. Hey, was that your particular flight booking, for example, when you're querying it with a colleague? Now, obviously, in addition to the invoice document, we've talked about being able to collect other documents that are related to the transaction. So we can see a list of the documents that we've got. Here it's the invoice. And we can also add others by dragging and dropping into the pane here, or maybe via the integration with Outlook, or by an automated integration with whatever sorts of documents, as you saw Max talking about um, in the previous presentation. And here you can see we've already pulled the metadata relating to the invoice that we want to associate with whatever document we attached. And then the user can choose the type of document that, it's, that he or she's attaching and, and then populate those fields and so on. And then they can import 
and that document will be added to the attachment list. Now there we've got, and you've got two documents, but again, think about the more complex transactions, because that four documents per invoice from Leap was only an average. So some it might just be the invoice, and others it might be many, many more. So again, going back to my list, think how many documents that I, I might need personally to pull from multiple, multiple sources. And then how do I view them all? And how do I view those transactions? Well, on from the importing the invoice and validating it, we've then got the invoice ledger. So this displays all the invoices that are in workflow processes being handled by Doxis and processed by the Doxis workflow engine. So a user can use the metadata fields up the top here to find a specific invoice, or they can group by column and find a view that works for them. Maybe there's a corporate level instruction to process all invoices for a particular supplier, so let's, let's um, group by supplier, or maybe I, by a particular task type. So here we, we've grouped by task type. And if that grouping method is sufficient, the user can hide the metadata search and make more screen real estate available, and so, but they, they can then save that view. So every time they return to this screen, it's the format that they, want, that they will want to see it in. We can automatically flag high priority items with color coding, for example, those nearing a, a payment discount date expiry. So we make sure let's get those processed and make, make use of that discount. Um, the user can also interact with colleagues on an ad hoc basis by generating an email. Please take a look at what I'm looking. Can you answer this query? What do you think? Whatever. Please just take a look. Now, most of the time, a user will work on a single invoice, but there may be occasions where they want to bulk approve something. Those pretty standard small transactions may be. So again, they can group select, they can do a collective release, and when they do that, they could actually get a view of how much they're suddenly saying we're going to spend or we're going to pay. Um, the, 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 title, the totals of those invoices that are then are given to them down there. And then also that's not necessarily just across a, a single task or, or a single subcategory that we've listed. We, it can be on a global level as well. And that's just a little simple little bit of functionality that Docs is providing to make life as easy as possible for the end user. And it, there are many, many more that will take far longer than 20 minutes or so to talk about. Sorry, highlighting that. Now, at the end of the process, because whilst we want the process to run nicely, we want to think about audit and stuff like that. So Doxis can generate a PDF copy of the audit trail and store it as a record for audited purposes, a document associated with the transaction. Go to the transaction when it's all over. There's your PDF cast in stone audit trail. So think about that. You've designed your process to be compliant and generate the right information and store the right information. So by definition, that is then compliant. And that's the only process that you use. So audits, therefore, should become a pain-free experience. You know it's there. You know the process is compliant. Probably you could be able to flag and search for any exceptions. If you sorted those out, the, the, the day the auditor arrives is not going to be an anxious one for you. Now, all this is available in SAP. You can see the invoice ledger. You can see the workflow mask. And it's all also available on mobile devices. So if you've got to have approvals by an exec on the move, because you've got those complex approval processes based on whatever criteria you choose to define, they can do it from wherever they are on whatever device. Now, what other areas? Can Doxis help? Taking so one spec step back in the process before invoice handling, we've got order confirmation. Now, at home, this is the invoice from Amazon telling me what my son has, or in this case, my daughter has just ordered and when it should be delivered. But potentially, any problems with the order, for example, I need to be notified of as well. Multi line order, maybe something's not in stock. 
Now, for me personally, it might be a bit of a headache because son or daughter are expecting something that's not going to get delivered. But in the commercial world, whilst the method of communication is probably the same, complexity and significance can be radically different. Just think about just-in-time manufacturing, where we need to recognise any delays and act immediately. My wife worked for Marla um, in doing project, product, project, oh, production management in a factory making air filter boxes. And there were times when they had the helicopter from the factory to the Jaguar Land Rover factory in, in Coventry to make sure they met that delivery date. And Jaguar Land Rover was sweating like mad because if we don't get the stuff, OK, Marla, we've got to pay us massive compensation, but we've got orders, we've got deliveries to make the commitments we've made to sell cars and Land Rovers. So, if we put an order confirmation process, we can get significant benefits in the downstream process if we enhance that process with DOCSIS. So again, order confirmation, multiple documents, multiple formats is a single, sing, simple, or relatively simple, one would think, single order. But we've, we need to pull out the order number, the delivery date, the quantity, the price, the payment terms. And it might be, might, might be multi-line, and it might be multi-page. So if the process is manual and sorting through multi-line stuff, that's extremely painful and time-consuming for those involved, and it's open to error. But don't worry, Doxis is here. Doxis can help. Also even help with the SAP world. So with the invoices, order, com order documents can be imported by whatever the appropriate mechanism, and once ingested, in the same way that invoices are presented, Order confirmation validation mask can allow a user to check the contents of the document, validate, um, check any errors or, or concerns, and make sure that everything is aligned, everybody's happy um, to process on. And we can check any deviations, how, with intolerance, how much intolerance are we within predetermined levels, and those can be highlighted to the user as well. Now with Every order being placed, and after that, every order is then placed in, like we had the invoice ledger, we've got the order confirmation cockpit placed in the relevant workflow to be processed by the assigned team or individual. And also you can see the additional highlighting of areas where there are deviations from the tolerance levels we've specified. Now, instead of stepping through this in the DOCSIS interface, let's look at the SAP integration. And we believe that fewer of you will be familiar with this, so we've added some detailed descriptors on, embedded on the following screens, which will be clearly visible if, if you want to take the copy of the presentation away later, so better expl more explanatory. So here you can see we've got the color-coded status indicator. It doesn't project very well, but we've got green and red bars against, against different orders. Now the filter function, you can show or hide the items displayed. Inbox displays all processes that I'm involved in, and the history shows the ones I've been working on. And then the functions, uh, namely search to find in any items, for example, by, by sorting by order or searching by order, or supplier or delivery date. And then we've, can, you can also display columns and refresh. Sorry, I'm standing in front of the screen there. Now, the record section shows header type information, item number, process status, and responsibilities around the transaction dedicated to the user involved, organization, group, and so on. And finally, the type. And then we move on to the SOP integration confirmation validation screen. And we can see the key status elements of the order. And we can, we've got a moderate deviation here and a critical deviation. A couple of them are OK. Come back to that. Um, we've got the key general information summarized in the middle of the screen. And then the decisions options down here. And then at the bottom here, we've got navigation there. And then at the bottom here, we've got deviation display, going back to what I pointed out a moment ago, moderate and critical. So moderate ones are slightly out of tolerance, but we can still process, whereas the critical ones require some form of intervention. And then moving on again, we've got the position table. And here you can see highlighting, we, we've got, got the information that we've pulled from the document or from another data source. Um, 
and, and you can see the line items and the position. And on the right, you can see the, the, excuse me, the baskets which give you line item suggestions directly. And again, the user can be prompted by the contents of the blue bar up here as well. We can choose to view and add and delete positions um, using the function buttons. And we can also add notes and queries. We can also view the attachment list, as you saw Max earlier on, dragging document in, into SAP, which is then synchronized with, with Doxis. So you can view those, Doxis, those documents from within Doxis as well as from within SAP. And, in, and also, in the same way you can add notes within Doxis, we can add notes in that world as well, in the SAP world as well. So finally, you'll appreciate along the way, we've collected a huge amount of information and documents about a supplier or particular transaction. We might want to view those in different contexts depending upon your role and, and why we're looking, as well as on a granular basis within a specific attachment. Now, there may be a bigger picture, other more potentially relevant documents that you've collected organizationally that are still tied in some way to the particular transaction. So they may, they'll, be, they'll have been generated in the process outside of pure purchase to pay, maybe contracts and so on. Now, domestically, we've already talked about how I have to go to many different places to go and see what's going on, which, is, as I said before, painful, time consuming, and I need to know where to look. But in our commercial world, our Doxis world, we make things so much easier. We can provide information at your fingertips. We've got a global search feature which enables a user to run a Google-type search across the entire Doxis repository, or more likely the part of which to which the user has been given access. So here we'll search for <coughs> HTG, and here you can see that what's been returned. We've, we've got Word documents, we've got PDF documents, and we've got a folder being clicked on there, and that's a supplier folder, it's actually linked to a supplier workspace. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. As we saw with Matt from Max earlier on, the workspace shows the high-level header type master data and links to other objects and third-party systems. And that, that data, as we heard earlier on, will be transported to Doxis via, to Doxis, via Doxis contact bridges. Now, this supplier workspace therefore serves as the one-stop shop when I want information about my suppliers. Now, here you can see the summary information about the supplier with the folder structure. And let's drill down a little bit, a little bit more. We've pointed out all the documents. So we've got a, a note, we've got the PDF documents, and, we, and we've got emails. Anything of any description that's been collected along that life of that transaction. But we can also look at the ongoing processes as well. We've got a link to effectively almost a work basket. What are the transactions that are ongoing with that supplier? And we've got links to other workspaces. We might want to just look at all the list of all the purchase orders. Um, and from there, we can drill down into the purchase order, see that information and the specific documents associated with the purchase order. But also, we've got a link back either over there or, in fact, over here to the supplier workspace as well. So we can jump around to find information that we need. It may be in the, in an, the context that we would prefer to view it. And then, as I said, mentioned, we've got contract management access as well. So the users, you can see the user's got easy access to the big picture, of not only information held within Doxis, but maybe also that residing in other applications. Brief Brief slide there, Doxis can sit in the middle, and specific smart, smart bridges will be bought for, built for specific applications, or the ability, as per the question from the last group, from, others, from other worlds to, 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 come to connect via the REST API. So in conclusion, you've seen in my world, although Amazon might be easy, even for me, things can get more complicated and keeping track of my family's purchasing and the purchasing f that I make on, on ex for expenses and so, and so on and so forth from many different suppliers can be a headache for me. And commercially, absolutely goes off the scale. But with co the commercial world, unlike my world, I've got no option. I've got no option at all. It's just what I've got between my ears. But with the, 
in the commercial world, you've got the option of we can deliver not only return on your investment, but also the return on your information with Doxis. So, any questions? Thank you very much indeed. I've got sunglasses in my bag. I should have brought them up. I brought my reading glasses, but not my sunglasses. Oh, um, in the middle. <laughs> Over. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, thank you for the presentation. Pleasure. <clears throat> um, we are currently running um, the uh, invoice solution from, from SCR. Yeah. And we currently struggling with the situation that the logistics department want to include the delivery notes in right. this uh, solution as well. Mm -hmm instead of the order confirmations. Right. Is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, now I have to say, don't know enough about the process to know whether we've got a delivery note validation mask out of the box, if you need, wanted to go down that process, or whether you could simply effectively treat a delivery note document as an order confirmation document. We, I can take those, I, I can't give you an absolute answer now, but we can certainly take those away, or um, maybe drop by the, uh, one of the, the technology booth in, at the other end of the building, and they, the experts say we'll probably be able to give you an answer. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry.